Welcome to this first video on translational motion. All the way through physics and mechanics, we're going to be talking about objects that move. So that might be translational motion, stuff that's going around in circles, it's rotating, or it's just swinging back and forward in simple harmonic motion. But all of the time when those things are moving, they're going to have a center point. For example, here we've got a guy who's running along at 5 meters per second. But if you think about it, on the one hand, one of his feet might be moving forward at 10 meters per second. His other foot that's planted on the ground might be completely still. But we still say that at his center point, he is moving at 5 meters per second. And that's the only thing we really care about. So that's what center of mass is. It means that we don't need to be worrying about all the other moving stuff which is going on around an object. We just care about the average point, the point in the middle. And you can imagine that this whole object is represented by one point only. That is center of mass. So in this video, we're going to look at how this one point is going to be the only thing we care about. We're going to figure out how to find the distance or the position of where it is and how fast a center of mass is moving. Let's get into those couple of things. So for example, you might have two discs, a 5 kg disc and a 10 kg disc. You might have to find where the center of mass is because a big bunch of it's out to the right here and some of it's out to the left in the orange disc. What you need here is a formula to figure out where it lies from these two meter apart discs. This here means the distance to the center of mass. And this is the distance from the first disc here. You just choose which one the first one is. And that means the distance to the center of mass is the distance to the first one, which you're already there, so it's going to be zero. M1 is the mass of the first disc, so that'll be 5 kgs. D2 is the distance to the second disc, so that's 2 meters away from where we started. And M2 is the mass of the second disc, 10 kgs. Down the bottom, again, we've got the masses. Mass 1, 5 kgs, plus mass 2, 10 kgs. So if in this case we were going to find an answer, you'll also notice that there's plus dot 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 on these ones here. It's because you could add together as many discs or as many objects as you wanted. You just keep adding them on. D3 plus M3, D4 plus M4, and keep adding their masses onto the bottom as well. Now in this case, we've only got two. So our distance to the center of mass is just D1M1 plus D2M2 divided by mass one plus mass two. So to actually solve the problem, we're gonna start here at disc one, where the distance to disc one is zero because we are already there. Then we're going to have to plug these numbers into the formula. So zero, which means actually we're going to cancel out this whole first thing. And this is going to be the same every single time because zero times mass one is always going to be zero. So your formula is really distance two times mass two divided by mass one plus mass two. So let's plug in all of those numbers here. We've got distance to two is two meters. We've got the mass of two is 10 kgs. We're going to put those in those two and the mass of one is five kgs. So plugging all of these numbers in, we've got 20 divided by 15. Or if we simplify that down, the distance to the center of mass from where we started is 1.33 meters. So there we've done it. We've found where the center of mass of two different objects are. Now there's one assumption that you're gonna to need to remember. That is that the rope in the middle has a negligible or a very small weight i.e. because it can't have a center of mass of its own, otherwise we'd be including it in the formula. So just assume that it has a light weight, and if anybody asks you what you've assumed, you say the rope has a negligible or a light weight to it. So here's the formula that you're going to need to memorize to find the distance to the center of mass. While we've done the distance to the center of mass, that center point, what happens if they're actually moving? These two points, if they're one kind of system, say they're connected together by a cord still, we might want to find the velocity of the center of mass. Now we've memorized this distance formula. The velocity formula is exactly the same, except this distance and all of these distances are replaced by Vs for velocity. So the velocity of center of mass is the velocity of 1, which is 7, multiplied by the mass of 1, 5. And the velocity of 2, 3, multiplied by a 10, the mass of 2, divided by their masses again. And in the same way, it's just the same as the other formula, you could add on as many masses and velocities as you liked. Now before we start, there's one more thing you need to know. Because the 7 is going to the left, which is in the opposite direction to the right, we're going to call it a negative 7. It purely means the opposite direction. We could have made the other side a negative 3 as well. Still would have worked. So now plugging these numbers into our formula, 
we get the velocity for the center of mass equals velocity one times mass one, which we've got negative seven times five, plus velocity two, three times mass two, which is 10, all divided by mass one, five, plus mass two, 10. We've plugged those numbers into our formula as we see it. That's gonna give us negative 35 plus 30, so it's negative five, all divided by 15. Now, if we simplify that down, we get negative 0.33 meters per second. And the negative just means it's going to the left in the same direction as this first disk. So that is how we find velocity as well. And there is one assumption that goes with this. If you have a center of mass moving along, you have to assume there are no external forces acting. There isn't any friction. It's not gonna bump into a wall and stop it because those things would obviously change the center of mass. So here's everything you need to know from this video. You need to know that a system and an object has a center of mass. So a single object, like this runner, will have a center of mass. And if you get more than one object in what's called a system, so they're tied together in some kind of way, then that has a center of mass as well, like we calculated. You can calculate where that center of mass is by this formula here. So the distance to the center of mass, how far away it is, is the distance from point one, which is where you're starting, so you're gonna make that zero, times mass one plus the distance to two times mass two all divided by the masses added together. You're also gonna do the same thing for velocity. It's the exact same formula, but V for velocity instead of D for distance. With the distance, you have to assume that the rope or whatever's connecting them is lightweight. It's negligible. And with velocity, you have to assume there aren't any external forces acting. So you're not gonna stop any movement or the velocity with external forces that don't really count. So that's translational motion. Let's look at a question now. Here we got a system, has two disks, A and B, they're attached together with a light cord, which means the weight's insignificant. So they're gonna slide across a frictionless surface. We got disk A here with a mass of 0.517 kgs. It's going along at 1.21 meters per second. Now disk B is stationary and has a mass of 0.684 kilograms. We need to calculate the speed of the center of mass of the system and show our working. Now, because we're good, we will have remembered our center of mass formula. And because we only have two objects, we don't need to add any more on the top or on the bottom. So this means our velocity of the center of mass is velocity one, which is 1.21, multiplied by mass one, 0.517 kgs. Then we're gonna add that to velocity two, which is nothing, it's zero times mass two, which is 0.684. Still zero when you multiply them together. Divide that by these two masses together. So you're gonna put that into your formula because it says show all of your working. And then you're gonna plug that into your calculator. You might simplify, but you'll end up with 0.521 meters per second. And that would be the velocity of the center of mass of these two disks. So that is the center of mass video.